Welcome everybody here to our next webinar at uh, JFD Brokers. Today's topic is a prime uh, supreme. Oh, it's a, now I talk uh, wrong pronunciation of that wording. Um, the supreme discipline of trading, portfolio trading. That's exactly the topic of today. We deal with portfolios. That's really something um, very important, very interesting, and uh, you can learn a lot during this uh, webinar. My name Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for those kind of uh, webinars, a warm welcome in the name of JFD as well. Um, those are the ones which make those webinars possible for everybody of us, and it's uh, really cool to have you here today. Today is the 28th of uh, February 2019. Um, yeah, and uh, I mentioned already the topic portfolio trading. It's about having a couple of strategies and the question is simple, how to select, how to allocate money. If you have the chance and possibility to have several strategies, then you immediately um, end in those kind of questions. And that's really quite important, how to diversify uh, your strategies and how to allocate the right amount of money for a given strategy. As always, you will find um, the slides of the webinars already um, ready for download in the GoToWebinar control panel. And um, if you have any further questions or interest in a later shown Excel sheets, uh, no problem. Just uh, drop me a note at uh, s dot friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com and uh, I will immediately um, make it possible that you have access to those kind of slides and those kind of Excel sheets. Okay, before we really start, you know the procedure. As always, uh, I have to show that slide at least once during a webinar. It's our risk disclaimer because we talk about trading, we talk about strategies, we talk about how to set up a portfolio. And later, you will do maybe similar steps, um, maybe following things you have learned during those webinars. But of course, finally, um, as always, you are responsible for your own activities. Um, I think that's self-explaining and has to be mentioned at least once during a webinar. Let's look a little bit more in detail what are the topics of today. It will start with uh, two things uh, which I have shown in previous webinars, uh, a little bit about um, what we present, the good equity curve, that's uh, easy stuff, so to say. And we have to talk about how drawdowns add up if you add several strategies. So that is a quite cool question. And you see already I wrote down one plus one equals 1 1.41. That sounds crazy. Um, and um, still, I, I'm, I know what I'm uh, writing here. So those two topics, what is a good equity and uh, how to deal with uh, several drawdowns um, if you uh, overlap uh, several strategies that is more for introduction. But then we go really to portfolio trading and even we start with that, um, the, the basic question, why going for portfolios and not to just create uh, the next uh, strategy? No, um, in order to create a portfolio, we, we need key figures of the individual strategies. And I will introduce, let's call it a concept, um, what kind of key figures you need uh, in order to really have everything ready for creation of your own portfolio. Because yeah, there is some input needed. Uh, we not just want to say, okay, I diversify my trading, I have several strategies and I go for all. Uh, no, we need input in order to really mathematically uh, derive our portfolio allocation. And uh, therefore we need those uh, specific key figures uh, to do the steps right. And then of course we create, we really set up a portfolio and now I need a base for, for data. Um, and I will use um, 
strategies from JFD and West. You, you might have heard about that, that uh, there's a collection of uh, several strategies available. Right now we have 11 strategies at the JFD and West. And um, finally, what you can do there is you can follow those strategies, build your own portfolio and so on and so forth. But that's not really the topic of today. I just want to have that as an input. I want to use the, the key figures of those strategies which I implemented at JFD and West, I use exactly those um, strategies, those key figures as input, and then uh, we, out of those, we create uh, that kind of portfolio. But I mention it once again. Um, you can do it with any kind of strategy, your own other people's strategy, you have heard about it, uh, you follow maybe something else. Um, so you can do everything, not only with JFD and West strategies, you can do it with any strategies, at least if you can create the right input key figures, and then you can follow exactly the same steps. And finally, you can use exactly the same Excel sheets uh, I will later show, and, uh, and you just have to replace uh, the numbers within that kind of Excel sheet. Okay, um, once again, the basic question, uh, why? Why are we going for portfolio trading? Or what do I mean with portfolio trading? Portfolio trading, I mean here, is simply that we have a couple of strategies and finally um, we want to use them all or maybe a subset of those. And But still, we want to have high profits, we want uh, to have low drawdowns. But now is the question how to select uh, just give any each strategy uh, 1,000 euro and uh, it should do its job? No, that would be a little bit too simple. So we want to do it professionally. But why? The first is obvious, diversification. I think um, that is um, not only a word, but it's quite important uh, subject that we know. If we put all our um, eggs in one basket, that means, hmm, no, that's not a good idea. And I mean, if you have several, we should use them. Di diversification is key for professional portfolio, is key for professional investment. And as with your own strategies, if you want to overlap those, you're doing a really cool job and you act as being a portfolio manager. The good thing is finally that we have a better adjustment to different market faces due to totally different strategies, at least if those strategies are really more or less independent. So I'm not talking about uh, two long only strategies, one long only strategy on uh, S&P 500 and one long only strategy on uh, s uh, DAX, for example. Okay, it's not exactly the same market, but still those two strategies would highly correlate um, in their results, at least if they act on uh, same time frames. Um, so that is not a good diversification. With better adjustment to different market faces, I mean simply I even cannot define market faces, to be honest. And um, you, you hear me laughing because uh, it's really uh, uh, quite difficult, at least to do it as we speak. Looking back into the history, then we can say, okay, that was a sideward market. Yeah, that's good. That was a trendy market. Good. But to be in place exactly in time and to know what kind of face we have, that's really diff difficult. But if we have different strategies, they will react on different faces. And if we have them all together, then we are better adjusted. Finally, that gives us more smooth equity curves, which is uh, quite elegant. As that's exactly what we want, um, that we have um, more smooth equities and we have the possibility to reduce any drawdown. Or we can take our money, let's say, twice. Or we can, by reducing the overall drawdown, we can maybe increase the risk uh, in total. Maybe. Let's talk about that. But at least principally, if we, if we add up, if we overlap different strategies, that will uh, be, uh, result, that results in a reduction of drawdown. And 
that's first and exactly uh, what we try to achieve. Finally, and I wrote it in brackets here, uh, we we uh, have a more relaxed trading because we don't um, we don't don't have to think about the last trade or the just ongoing trade, big trade, one symbol, and we hope that overnight uh, we become rich. No, um, that's exactly what we don't want to achieve. Um, we want to have a more relaxed situation, and if we diversify in terms of different symbols, different strategies, then we get exactly what we uh, want to achieve. Before we go into the portfolio, I mentioned that we I have two topics before we really start. So that is a slide I uh, think I have used um, in a previous webinar, whenever exactly. I put it on the table here because if we talk about portfolios, we talk about equity curves, and the question is always, how can we call an equity a good one? Okay, it should go north, no question. Um, we, we want to have a good slope, no question. But finally, look to those four. Um, four different equity lines, um, and you may answer already here in the chat uh, which one you like most. And um, equity one, two, three, or four. Of course, let's look a little bit more in detail. We see that the red equity, the equity one, is outperforming all the others, definitely. It's uh, earning within a little bit more than 1,000 trades, uh, 4,000 euros. It has the best slope. Uh, so that is a top performer in terms of profit. That's obvious. And the other three are uh, have less profits. But... And I get already first answers, and you are totally right. And I switch already to my next slide uh, with the final answer. So equity two is the best one. Why? Profit is not all. We have to think about profit in relation to drawdown. Look once again to the red one. We have 4,000 euros profit. And in between, we have drawdowns um, that are faces, for example, from here to here or, or from here to here. Those drawdowns might be in the order of 300 or 400 euros. Looking for equity number two, um, it's hard to, to, to see any drawdown. There are some, but maybe 10 or 20 euros, not, not more. So if you now compare the overall profit, or better to say the slope of uh, the equity, with the drawdown, then we, we easily can realize a good key figure, profit divided by drawdown, in order to answer the question, which one, which equity curve is the best? And still, that is not the final answer. Uh, you might have other preferences in order to call something the best. And honestly, there are a thousand ways to, to describe that. You, you might have other boundary conditions in mind um, to, to define that. But for up to now, we can live with a very simple key figure that it's, that, and this is profit divided by drawdown. Because that is something like the risk reward ratio not in the sense of uh, we, we we have a trade we have a stop loss and we place a take profit uh, three times away from stop loss no that would be the normal definition of risk reward ratio here it's meant for a strategy our reward is a profit and our risk is a drawdown and those key figures divided by each other is a very good key figure in order to describe equities and in order to say which one is really good. We will use that uh, in a few minutes just for the first overview about 11 strategies in order to answer the question which one is the best. You will see we have much more or uh, 
boundary conditions to, to be involved later, but it's good to have the, um, the answer for the question which equity curve is the best. The other principal question is what really happens if we overlap two equity curves? And so overlap means firsthand we just add them. Later we will give them weights uh, first, but let's start just by adding up two equities. And if we do exactly stuff like that, then there's a very simple equation. And that equation is written here. The drawdown of the combined equity is always less or equal than the sum of the individual drawdowns uh, of those given strategies. Think about it a little bit. That's really good to know. So the worst case, which might happen, is that they simply add up. But that's really the worst case. In totally uncorrelated cases, and I will have an example in a minute, then it's um, a little bit different. So we will never have really a drawdown, which is the sum of the individual drawdowns. No. Um, if I assume that uh, drawdown one and drawdown two for the two equities we want to overlap, uh, those drawdowns in numbers are the same, then our combined drawdown is just the single one multiplied with the square root of two. Therefore, this 1.41. And that's really important. So if you go further in uh, uh, down that road, it means we, if we add equity curves of uncorrelated equities, then we can sum the um, the, the power of two sums of the individual drawdowns, and finally, then we create the square root of that sum. So that's really good. So it's like one power two plus one power two, and then the square root. Or if we have individual other numbers, okay, okay we can always use um, the, the square sum, and then finally, from the sum, we um, calculate the square root. Mathematically, that's only true for totally uncorrelated uh, equities. The good thing is that we have exactly those. Not absolutely uncorrelated, but we can make use out of that formula later, because that enables us um, to, to have higher returns with combined um, portfolios. I wrote it here already that later I will simply introduce uh, a security factor of two, um, just to be on the safe side. So still, the assumption would be totally uncorrelated. Uh, since that is not proven, I will later use uh, just a factor of two for the summed drawdown, um, just for security to have some buffer uh, for for anything which we cannot predict that quite well. Let's have a look to to uh, the formula once again, or to have it a little bit more visual. So think about the following here. Um, I have two two uh, rows of of uh, numbers. Uh, Oh, two columns. So one is A and one is B, and uh, I just have uh, random numbers here um, between minus one and plus one. Um, so those might represent something like uh, the, the daily profit of a strategy or something like that. Those would be the blue and the red curve here. And now I add those up. That results in the yellow curve. And the good thing is, if I calculate the standard deviation of a single line, it would be 0.6 for the other 0.6 about. If I do the same for the added up equity, it's 0.86. So the ratio is now 1.44. It's close to square root. The same is true if you go for drawdowns. I have created here 
two uh, in total three equity curves the red the blue and then they add it up so the sum of the both and we can do exactly what we normally do with equities of trading we can calculate the drawdown and for example if you look for the drawdown of the red curve it's about four and we have a drawdown within our blue uh, which is um, about even five and now look to the combined equity it's definitely not four plus five meaning nine no in this practical example it would be still something in the order of five that's brilliant that's good that a combined equity has not the sum of the individual drawdowns that's really good that is the principal advantage of any portfolio of uncorrelated trading strategies if you have that as an input then your drawdown will always be smaller if you um, overlap those individual strategies so that's really a very important input for our portfolio um, allocation that is the starting point we know how to deal with drawdowns and we know how to add up drawdowns for individual strategies we know how we we can judge equities that's good as well so we are prepared but now is the question what kind of input do we really need from individual with some trading strategies so what is the, the what is needed in total in order to set up a portfolio <laughs> okay the first thing is we need a, a couple of profitable trading strategies and i mean profitable of course just with diversification we cannot um, turn a couple of unprofitable trading strategies into a profitable portfolio strategy of course that's not possible so we need profitable trading strategies as an input and the more the better that's in principle right later i will use the numbers uh, out of the jfd invest um, uh, platform so that we have real numbers as an input for that portfolio uh, creation of course we need the individual equity curves of those individual strategies that's important to have really the complete curve would be ideal but in most cases only in those if you have they are completely your, by your own then you might have access to the complete equities but at least what we try to use here is the monthly return table of those um, individual strategies so definitely we need those but then we might lose some information the the detailed information within one month there might be huge losses and later the months uh, turned to, uh, to be a green one so a profitable one once again so if we only have the monthly return table as input for historical equities then we need two additional key figures and both are very important and you realize already that i emphasize it a little bit more here uh, verbally because it's important to have both those drawdowns uh, are equally important uh, finally we need the drawdown of the balance and we need the drawdown of the equity okay uh, maybe you have a question mark right now um, in your head um, what is stefan talking about drawdown of balance drawdown of equity there's a difference and the difference are the floating losses drawdown of a balance curve balance curve from a trading strategy is the um, your account all always with closed trades so your 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 balance curve will make jumps to the north or to the south only if the trade is completed is executed is finished closed but what in between it might be that you open a trade and um, then the trade 
goes into the minus, goes more into minus, even more into minus. So you might have floating losses. That's uh, the normal standard for, uh, name for those um, losses with open trades. So floating losses are the open trades. And we might have high numbers for floating losses and still we have to to <clears throat> to suffer them. So, so we, we have uh, later, if, if, if we trade that kind of strategies, it's important that we know in advance that there might be floating losses which are much higher than you you are willing to accept. If so, we have to react. So both is important. Drawdown based on balance, drawdown based on equity, meaning floating losses. And both numbers I will illustrate in a minute um, a little bit more when it comes to JFD and West and our input. Then there's another big thing we have to, to consider. Think about trading strategy. We have an account. Um, the account might be a 1K account. Good. That 1K account is trading several instruments, but always the trading account is trading 0.01 lot. So the minimum lot size. Good. And now we want to scale that account. But what does it mean? Normally, hmm, if you have a 1K account and we want to scale it to a 1.5K account, so not to invest 1,000 euro into that strategy, we want to invest 1,500 euro into exactly that strategy. Or think about your own trading. You, you, you go for 1.5 times uh, the original size. What do you do with your lots? So with your lot size, can you multiply your 0.01 trade with 1.5? Of course not. So um, there's a minimum lot size and a minimum step size, which is 0.01 for uh, most of the Forex pairs. Uh, just as, as an example for, for ducks, it might be a little bit different or any other instrument. So that kind of scaling is not that easy as we might think. And originally, when I thought about doing a webinar and uh, yeah, to deal with portfolios, um, it, everything looks uh, quite easy because uh, you you think everything can be adjusted. You can have multipliers, whatever you want, but that's not right. If we are not talking about uh, several hundred k euros, we want to invest in a couple of strategies because if we have really high numbers for our investment account, then that kind of topic here is not that important. But assuming that we are talking about maybe 5K, 10K, uh, yes, then that topic is very important because we cannot really scale with any floating number if we are already trading minimum lot size. The only thing we can do is we can go from a 1K account to a 2K account and then we not any longer trade 0.01 lot. Now we trade 0.02 lot. In between, we have no choice. There's no chance. Therefore, this is very important that we have the minimum lot size in mind as well. Scaling can be um, can be much more difficult in this case than you originally might think. Let's first look how I get my input. How I get my input from for those numbers, and let's revisit the topic of equity balance and drawdowns. Um, because if we go here for, for some specific strategies, then uh, it will be hopefully uh, more, more obvious. Let's start with the strategy, for example, gold mine. Um, so that is the input uh, I, I take. I take here from exactly the, the, that kind of web page. Uh, you see already here's the monthly return table. Uh, that is one 
input I have copied into an Excel sheet. And then let's look for the other key figures. We have one number here, which is the equity balance deviation. That is the maximum floating loss which has ever occurred within that trading history here. So we know now that 5.8% floating losses is possible for that kind of strategy, at least during the last, uh, I don't know, uh, 14, 15 months, that was the highest number. But now that's the one part. The other part is, of course, we have to look for the um, um, for the maximum drawdown as well. The maximum drawdown for that strategy here is from this point, 6,162 euros down to here, 5,000 and something. That is a drawdown based on balance. And we need both. We need that equity balance deviation out of floating losses as being one maximum number. And we need the overall drawdown as well. You may think about that a little bit different. Finally, if we would have the real equity, including all, then we could use that drawdown out of um, um, that curve as well. But since we don't have access to those kind of numbers, I separate the two in drawdown based on balance and drawdown based on equity balance deviation. And you see the two numbers here, one is 5.8 and um, one, the other one, um, uh, I don't have it by hand, uh, but it's 10% uh, a little bit more, uh, maybe 12% here. Both numbers I put into consideration for our portfolio calculation. The other topic I mentioned, we have to think about minimum lot size. Let's, um, oh, I need access to, to that one. Sorry, I forgot that I need this one. So I have to log in uh, in order to see the closed trades. Um, just a second, uh, then we have it. Because we have to look, what is the minimum investment sum for such a strategy? And the minimum investment, think once again about my example, we have a 1,000K um, strategy, and the strategy is trading uh, 0.01 lot, and we cannot scale it with a factor of 1.4 or 1.3, for example. First, let's have a look to closed trades. Closed trades, why? I want to, to have a, uh, a look to what is traded. And if you go through that kind of um, strategy here, I know for sure that it's always 0.01 lot. That's the trade size of that strategy. What does it mean? In principle, JFD wrote down here minimum investment 500 euro. That's okay. You can go for that strategy with 500 uh, euros. But thinking about that scaling of a single strategy, no. Then the correct answer would be we need 6K. Because with 6K, the strategy is trading 0.01 lot. So whenever we want to double the 0.01 lot, it would mean we need 12K for the same strategy. And in order to have the numbers of drawdown and percentage right, we can only um, go for those kind of integer multipliers. So we can go for 6K or times 2, times 3, and so on. And the minimum sum would be exactly 6K. So that's important. You see, Portfolios, to create portfolios for, for millions or billions of, of uh, euros, that's easy. But to create portfolios for smaller amount of money, like even 10K is small or 5K, um, it's not that easy because we cannot scale like we originally might think about that topic. So 
those are the inputs we need. If you have that kind of input, then we can start. Uh, so let's have a look to the input. Finally, so we have it here, um, and that's a collection of numbers. Let me, oops, I have no idea why my screen went black. I'm not sure whether it was for you as well. Anyhow, the screen is back. And still, I think everything is working right. So what I have here is exactly the collection of all those strategies. And now the, the, the game starts here. I mentioned if you want to do it with your own trading strategies, you just have to replace those numbers by your own strategies or whatever input you use for different kind of strategies. If you have those numbers, you can use everything exactly what I present here. So in my case, I collected all the numbers from 11 strategies. I have the monthly return tables um, yeah, transposed here into that kind of list. And then I have always a number, uh, equity balance deviation, drawdown balance. And finally, I adjusted everything to um, minimum based uh, minimum investment sum based on lot size and I have the input of the, the web page as well um, later we will use um, always the higher number of the two because um, that's the one we should really use for that kind of scaling so once again we can not scale a strategy which has minimum 6,000 um, to a 7,000 euro strategy because we have not the right multiplier for that. So that's the first. That is the basic input and you just have to replace those numbers and everything is good. But now first question, which of those strategies is doing the best job? Hmm. Um, so let me summarize the data here. Um, and the first thing, let me go for uh, that kind of zoom here. Um, I just uh, translate the monthly return table into a, a chart graph, um, a, a bear chart. No, that was not a good idea. Let's do it for an equity. So that's the one here on the right hand side. And I have to make a comment here. I did something mathematically incorrect. In the complete Excel sheet, I go for sum up of percentage changes, which is not correct. I know that, uh, no question. So if you have an increase of 10% and then a second increase of 10%, that is not 20%, I know. Um, but let's keep that as a reserve for anything unforeseen, um, that this is not uh, exactly correct. So I did really summing up. I did it here by summing up the percentage values. That's good to know that we have a little bit in reserve. And then, yeah, best equity or best uh, is definitely Hyperion, 80% growth, so followed by Galileo. Hmm, remember, was it right just to look for profits? No. Uh, one step further, what I did. In order to answer the question first, which strategy is the best? What I did is first, I used two kind of summing up of drawdowns. Uh, one, I use exactly the square root behavior uh, on that's uh, one column here. And the other has been, <clears throat> I simply look for the maximum number of the two. Anyhow, it doesn't really change the big picture. What I calculated finally has been, so the sum of all profits divided by those drawdowns. And now you see, okay, Hyperion, which has been with close to 80%, which was really the outperforming strategy here, is not anymore the best one. No, now it's Archimedes. Hmm. This so-called, well, what I call now risk-reward ratio, the best is here. That's important that we realize going for highest profit is not always the best. It's the combination of profit and drawdown. And we, if you want to create a portfolio, we need both. So um, it's good that we not simply look for the high performer, 
because then we don't need a portfolio. If you just look for the maximum profits, okay, answer, right, Hyperion. The only downside would be you would definitely, um, to be on the safe side, you need uh, 38K for that strategy and follow that. Okay, and then you get the highest profits. But that's not the portfolio we have um, in mind. We want to have it balanced and we have we want to take drawdowns into account as well. Okay, then we can really start creating our um, job as portfolio manager. We only need two additional numbers. Let me introduce those two first and then uh, I come to my final step. We just need two numbers. What is the amount of capital for our portfolio account? And we can uh, set up an allowed drawdown because that might change the picture. If we go for a maximum drawdown of 10% or a maximum drawdown of 20 or 50%. And so it's already here. We, we have to think about our preferences. I know that everybody would like to go for a drawdown of zero. Um, then trading is not the right answer. But so we need, we need to set up here a level. Or sometimes I use the question, how much money are you willing to lose? Always a very strange question. Um, if you talk about trading, you talk about profits. And one of my first question is, how much money are you willing to lose? What's important, very important question when we talk in general about trading. So if you have those two numbers, then we have one single remaining question. How to allocate the money for individual strategies in order to achieve the highest profits? You might have other things as boundary conditions as well in mind. Uh, maybe you, you want to, to change the, uh, to rephrase that kind of question. You, you may think, okay, I have a target and the target profit is 10% and now you want to minimize the drawdown. As always, when it comes to optimization, the answer is not straightforward because we have to define our boundaries and how to measure. It's the same then you, you, you have a navigation system and you want to come from point A to point B. Uh, what is the best route? Hmm. The answer, I don't know. It depends on what you call best. For one, it might be the shortest. For the other, the fastest. The next one, only public transport, whatever. So there's no single straight answer what a route from A to B is the best. So having those numbers, we can go into the final step of creating that portfolio. And now I go here for the next uh, one. And now it comes maybe a little bit complicated. I hope you can still follow. So you know already the left-hand side here. Uh, that's the input table with all the key figures we, we need for setting up the portfolio. What's new now? the minimum allocation sum for an individual strategy. You would have to do the same thing for any other kind of strategy. And I assume if you have different strategies, you might have a strategy which can be traded with one sub K and there are other strategies. They need definitely, for example, 10 K, otherwise you cannot trade them. So we need that minimum allocation for a single strategy. Okay, understood. So that part we know, that's the input. I make already one remark. I changed the number for Archimedes of equity balance deviation. Uh, originally it was uh, 4.52, changed it to 15, reason. That st strategy has a um, much shorter history. That's not that good that we don't have numbers, uh, more numbers here available. Uh, therefore I want to be on the safe side. That's the only reason why I increased that. But now let's come to the funny side here. That is part of the portfolio setting. And, oh, unfortunately I move too far. So now I'm back. So you see already, and um, we have here, we have uh, the overall growth, but 
Let's come to the input. So we have here an investment sum. I use 100k. I have later other numbers, uh, no problem. Then I set up a maximum allowed drawdown. Very good. And now I can change the numbers. Let me start um, with zeros. So now we don't have every profit. Let's start with Galileo. And we can only use multipliers. So we use a multiplier of one, and then we have already um, some results like here. So you see we have um, profits in total after a little bit more than one year of uh, 3%. OK. So why is that, that, that low? Yeah, we have only invested five, um, 5K. And now we can switch on um, any other strategy here as well, just having multipliers. And those multipliers um, go as multipliers on the minimum investment sum. And now you see it's already getting smooth. It's nice. We have already 0.5% uh, um, growth per month, which is um, about 6% a year. That's already good. And we can, what do we have else? Now we have invested 34K. We have a drawdown of 4%. And that drawdown is calculated exactly with, with that kind of uh, square root behavior with a security factor of 2. So far, so good. So now you, you might change numbers here. You go for higher values for this strategy and higher values for that strategy. Now we have already invested uh, 91K. Good. And let me uh, add up here a little bit more. Now, oops, everything is red because we have oh, we are now over invested. So our invested sum is 101K. Um, and that's not good. Therefore, the number is red. The profit is set to zero. You may think Stefan is uh, has something in mind what he finally wants to do. Because I have calculated the profit now to zero means I will later use the so-called solver, an optimization tool out of Excel. So that is doing exactly what we're doing here manually. We change allocation and look for highest monthly profit. That's what we are doing here right now. If I change uh, numbers um, and now I go for six, now I'm once again over-invested, not, not valid. That's one possibility which might happen here or there might be other things happen. Let me create such a case. Um, and the other case uh, would be Ah, I do it that way. If I go for a maximum drawdown of uh, go for a maximum drawdown of ten percent, uh, then you see um, uh, it's once again turning down to zero. The profit reason we have actually eleven. That's exceeding the ten, and therefore uh, we have no further result. So you see, you can play around manually by using those multipliers as input and that creates a strategy but we can even do it better just using directly excel let's use it so that's really it's the same excel sheet and the only thing and i always start with zeros here um, and then we use a technique which is called solver solver within excel Solver is a built-in optimization tool in Excel, and it's doing the following. So we select one cell, which is U3 here in this case, and that is the profit per month. And that one we want to maximize by applying the following change of cells. And those cells are exactly the multipliers for our individual strategies. Since we know that we cannot change those numbers with floating numbers, so not 1.5 or 1.3, uh, only in integer values, um, I use a trick. And the trick was 
I use that cell and then I use the integer command within Excel. So that's the trick that I don't still have those um, integer behavior for multiplying my allocated sum. And then we can do it. So we want to, to maximize our um, profit uh, following the boundary conditions of invested uh, one uh, investment sum of one 100k and allowed drawdown of 25%. Uh, so therefore we need those boundary conditions here and then we can start optimization. And that's all we have to do. Um, you may think, hey, nothing is, uh, I don't see anything. So um, computer is working uh, in the left-hand corner. Uh, you see it's already achieving 0.4% uh, um, gross and uh, number changes and changes and changes. It will take uh, half a minute, uh, then we get a result. One side remark to optimization and uh, using the solver. That is not a so-called deterministic uh, process. It means you start the process twice and you get not the same result. The uh, reason is it's not a, an exact solution. It's always close to that. And now it's done. We are ready. Portfolio is created. And you see the best way to allocate our 100k in order to achieve highest profit under the boundary condition of maximum drawdown of 25% is going with 50k for Galileo, 3k for Archimedes, and so on and so forth. You read the numbers. That's cool. That's the best balanced behavior we can achieve for a given investment sum and a given drawdown. We can use other numbers as input, other strategies as input. You can always use exactly the same kind of formula and create your portfolio allocation. Everything is done more or less automatically. Still, you might do it by your own, just saying, okay, I like that strategy, that looks promising for the near future, for whatever reason. Of course, you're welcome with that kind of idea as, uh, as well. But doing it completely mathematically would be this behavior. Later, I will just introduce one other boundary condition. But I show you already the results um, for, for other investment sums. So here we go. So those are already... Um, I've done the calculation, so I used accounts from 100k down to 5k uh, in two drawdown steps. Uh, one has been maximum drawdown of 10% and the other one of 25%. And then you see how to allocate for those kind of strategies. I repeat myself, if you have other input, other strategies, totally your own strategies, you can do simply do the same and you get quite good balanced uh, portfolio um, looking for drawdown, achieving highest profits. So normal behavior you can realize here by your own, um, the higher your account, the, the more profits you can generate. Why? Because those kind of boundary conditions, you know that Hyperion is only uh, applicable with 38k uh, yeah for for nearly all of those kind of uh, accounts we cannot use even that kind of strategy um, and then we have the problem with drawdown and therefore hyperion was out of the game here in that kind of behavior uh, if we go further up the road to 1 million um, uh, accounts no problem and um, earlier that strategy would be incorporated as well so there are several ways for setting up your portfolio. You can do it strictly mathematically, you can do it strictly manually, and you can try to to use, you know, let's say, a little bit of a combination of both. So looking to those numbers or those potential portfolio settings here, uh, what you might realize is that, uh, for example, if you go here, then there's a single strategy which looks uh, over 
pronounced, so to say. So uh, half of our money would go into a single strategy. Hmm, maybe we should use an additional boundary for that. And that's what I call go for a little bit more balanced. And what does it mean to have an additional boundary condition? It's quite easy if you have it already uh, within your Excel. Uh, I have to open one other Excel sheet and I will uh, show you how you do, how to add an additional boundary condition in this case. And that's here, no, just a second. It's not here, it's here. Um, so that Excel sheet is called max proportion. So what I did here is the following. I set up a number of 25% and that should be the maximum percentage of a single account within the portfolio. So just to have it more diversified, not in the way that as I sh uh, showed previously here, that 50K are in one strategy, so half of our money would go into one strategy. No, so now I set that limit. And since you realize that if I, whenever I, I uh, violate a boundary condition, I simply uh, set my, my profit to zero, I use here the same kind of formula. So whenever a specific proportion of a given Un, uh, given strategy is exceeding that value, I turn my profit to zero. So uh, just have, uh, as an example, if I go here, for example, for, for 20, uh, whoops, and then we immediately go down. So then we have it a little bit more balanced. And that kind of behavior um, is a good thing as well. And you see, will see the results for those more balanced um, portfolios in the following table here. Now you see we don't have any more 50K in a single strategy. You see, what I present here is on the one hand, final results, and on the other hand, just a concept of how to set up your own portfolio, not only for JFD Invest, just for your own trading strategies that we do diversification is good, that we knew, knew already before. But to do it exactly right, that's the kind of methodology which is behind those sheets and those uh, Excel formulas. Because now we can really go mathematically, strictly forward and no question, no gut feeling, nothing. It's just pure mess which is behind here. And then we can create those portfolios. And of course, you see, if we lower our investment sum, then we cannot go for those high risk strategies, high volume strategies anymore. And we switch to others, uh, which is good. But we can still achieve high profits. And I hope you can do the same with your strategies or other input uh, you have in mind with other strategies. So in a nutshell, of course, portfolios have an enormous potential um, because they are intrinsic diversified and they, they uh, offer new opportunities. So what I introduced here was more, was two things. The methodology of how to set up a portfolio, but on the other hand, you have uh, ready portfolios to be traded, for example, at JFD Invest. You can do this exactly same steps with your own strategies and with um, um, or other people's strategies, which you would like to combine in a, in a more professional manner. And finally, of course, you can do things like I do here with the JFD Invest strategies and uh, achieve good profits, as you know, uh, within my JFD Invest account. Uh, you may have seen those in other webinars. Uh, I can just show the result of what I'm doing here. Um, again, 
uh, although this is not normally the topic of uh, today's webinar. But here we go. That's my JFT Invest account, a well-balanced account, uh, going straight north, not absolutely straight, but quite well. So that's uh, a portfolio out of JFT Invest strategies, and it's doing a really good job. If you have interest in those Excel sheets, slides, no problem. Just drop me a note uh, via email. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot upload those Excel sheets here directly. Uh, it's not possible, but uh, just drop me a note and i make sure that you have access to those as well. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. If you have further questions, you can send me an email as well. Uh, and we might even Skype if you like uh, and get a more close contact. I'm open for everything like that. Um, enjoy the day, enjoy the evening, and hopefully see you at the next webinar. Then we talk, I can announce it already, then we talk about an interesting trading setup once again. And we will talk about cyber markets, which is nice that we normally we talk about trending markets. Now we talk about cyber markets and how to yeah to gain money out of that that would, will, will be cool uh, you will see so stay tuned and see you next month bye bye ciao